Welcome everyone. I am Dumb Toes, aka Ricky, and today we have a very important musical figure. Uh, frontman of Glitterer, bassist, title fight. Ladies and gentlemen, Ned Russin. Hello. Hello. Uh, thanks again. I already said thank you, but thank you for taking the time to do this because I like interviews and I like your music. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for asking me to do this. Okay, so let's get right into it. Earlier this year, Glitterer released a new album called Rationale, and I remember listening to it. I remember loving it. I remember getting unexpectedly choked up after listening to the song Can't Feel Anything. It's been a couple months since the initial release. What does Rationale mean to you? Uh, I mean, I feel like any record is is best when it's a snapshot of a time and place, you know, um, a specific period in a group of people's lives. And the record kind of was written as the band was becoming a proper band. Uh, up until that point, I had been doing everything myself. And at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, changed to incorporate other people and kind of like the original idea of the band was kind of trying to tackle the like what I feel like is the inherent loneliness of like the modern era and how that has kind of bled into these kind of larger political and whatever societal problems. Um, and then when like I was forced to play music in isolation because of the pandemic, it was kind of like it, I had to like rearrange how I was thinking about doing things because it was writing songs about being lonely and playing them in solitude was far too much yeah. um so yeah so the kind of transition to playing with other people in like 2021 and and this was the first batch of songs that we wrote and so it's you know it's a lot of figuring each other out and figuring how we mesh together and what our sensibilities all are and how they interact with one another and so to me i just look at the record as like you know the first unified statement of the band which is like a really nice thing um yeah, and it's just like a, a batch of songs that I like and have been uh, nice to get to know in, in this new way of whatever, playing them live, touring on them and doing that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's another record. Oh, man. I absolutely love this record. It's my favorite Glibber album. And uh, what's your favorite song off this record? Because mine's Can't Feel Anything. Um, I'm still partial to Plastic. Mm. I like, I also, I think for me, a lot of it's like favorite song to play live is like what I feel is the most, like the first thing that I think of when I think of like favorites, like the thing that I, I get most excited to play. Um, and I really like playing plastic. I really like playing, um, honestly, the same ordinary. Uh, I don't know. No one there. I feel like is, is one that I like a lot. Yeah. It's, it, we're still like kind of figuring it out too. You mm -hmm. know, it's, I feel like in my experience, you release a record and it takes a while for people to people to really digest it and like understand it and get into it. And so I think as we all, like as the band also figures those things out, yeah, my opinion on all these things changes as well. You know? Oh yeah, man. Uh, trying to, trying to go through my brain, trying to remember these questions because I was studying all day. And I don't want to mess anything up. Next question is not really a question, but more so complimenting you. I feel like you have a very recognizable voice, your singing voice. And uh, I also feel like you are severely underrated in terms of using your softer vocal ability. And songs that come to mind for me are actually on your on Glitterer's Fantasy 4 EP, Missing, Again, Again. Those are my favorite songs. I I don't know if it's just because like the way you sung those songs was just like a little bit like more like whispers, I guess. But uh, I love that vocal ability. What I guess what's your do you like singing like that is probably a question. Uh, I like I mean, I feel like you ask anybody what they, they think about their singing voice and they're usually <laughs> not the biggest fan of it. Uh, it's just like hearing yourself talk, as yeah. I'm sure you're aware <laughs> of, is like it's it drives you insane. Mm -hmm. Um. I've been doing it for long enough to where I can like get over that hurdle at this point. Mm -hmm. But there's, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like 
I don't think I'm the best singer. Uh, I don't think I have like a, a unique voice or anything. I think my ability really is like that I care in yeah. a weird way, yeah. you know? Um, like we went out to uh, karaoke the other night with the other bands and uh, I think I was like by far the, the least talented of all the people that went up there. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, it's just like the, the spirit that moves you in some weird way. Yeah. And so like that, I feel like I'm like competent in. Um, and as I get older, I'm like, it's, it's uh, one, I want to try different things, but two, it's also like, it's, it's hard to keep doing the same thing. It's hard to keep like singing in that register for me, like the really high shit. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, like I want to try stuff out. And also I think just in terms of like writing those songs that you're talking about, a lot of that stuff was stuff that I wrote at home without a band. And so like I'm sitting on my couch playing mm -hmm. songs, trying to write them. And that's the register in which I'm singing them. And so when I go into the studio, that's just what comes out. It's like, it was kind of just sitting right in that kind of nice little vocal spot. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I do like singing at that. I wish I were better at it. You know, mm. it's, uh, you're it, underrated, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank I, you. You're underrated in my opinion. Every time you like utilize that within songs, sometimes you do it in glitter, like the songs I mentioned mm -hmm. and also in title fight, obviously, but I'm just like, dude, not that I wish you would sing like this all the time because I'm not going to tell you what to do. Cause you, why would I do that? But I love it. It's the, thank it's you. awesome. Man. It's usually the opposite opinion. Uh, I get that a lot, but that's okay. I don't really care either way. But I, I appreciate the compliment. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, does Glitterer have a musical influence that would surprise a lot of people that listen to the band? I don't know. Uh, because it's also like, I'm not a very referential musician. Mm. Um, at least in terms of songwriting. Uh, I don't really like... I know a lot of people who I, I really admire and respect who will listen to a song and take their favorite aspects of that song, even if they're not like, I know people who have straight up stolen riffs mm -hmm. and I like that. And I know mm -hmm. people who have like been inspired explicitly by a specific song, a specific musician, whatever genre, like anything. And they're like really pulled and try to write their own version of that thing. Mm -hmm. I've never really tried to do that. Um, and so I feel like the, the inspiration thing is honestly just like anything that we're really listening to. Um, yeah. And that's like, I don't know. I've been really into like Pharaoh Sanders and Alice Coltrane and like mm. spiritual jazz lately. And maybe that's like a weird thing to pull from, but it's like, I'm not explicitly referencing these things when we're writing. Yeah. Um, you know, they asked us what music we wanted to play in between bands today. I said, Yellow Magic Orchestra, like stuff like that, which honestly to me, that's like, more in line with glitter because it's like pretty synth heavy and melody like driven yeah but um like that stuff i think like i don't know some of the city pop stuff has been pretty important for the band um uh i don't know but it's yeah it's just like anything that we listen to kind of like gets thrown in there somewhere somehow yeah i had a question about uh how's your banty collection looking like nowadays because i know that there was an article about almost 10 years ago where you displayed some banties and yeah, i was just yeah. like whoa i didn't expect this type of like i mean you like music so collecting banties yeah. makes sense but what's it looking like nowadays uh i i sold a lot of stuff um <laughs> i come from the like a very specific tradition within hardcore which is like even more specific within that like of kind of like youth crew hardcore t-shirt collectors which is like yeah. those are the people that i looked up to when i was a kid and i still look up to and there's just like a fascination with having old stuff as mm -hmm. kind of like i mean sadly i think there is like uh an ego part of it and that's like what i've tried to put in check as the years go by but there's also just like an archival aspect to it like these things are cool and they have weird historical value to them and so like i was really big into collecting and i still am into collecting like youth today shirts and so I have Youth of the Day shirts that be belong to members of the band that were like given to friends of theirs. Mm -hmm. I have records that were like, you know, sold on one specific tour. Like, and that stuff I think is, is really cool because it's, it is like, if you're a fan of the band, it's like a very specific piece of, I don't know, thing that is attached to that actual era. Um, I've slowed down a lot. 
Uh, I have bought some things recently, but it's all kind of, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Fewer and far between are these days. Uh, I yeah. kind of just like, I buy a lot of records. I buy a lot of books. That's what I focus on mostly. But it's like, it's kind of hard to, to fully let go of that. Um, yeah. So I still have, yeah, I still have a decent amount of that's awesome. Possessions. I, I'm so into that type of stuff because music's very important to me. And one of my favorite bands, or my favorite band of all time is Hum. And recently I've just been collecting a bunch of Hum tees from their 2003 reunion. And, you know, and then they broke up for like a lot of years or they weren't, weren't together. But speaking, speaking of youth of today, I actually got you a gift. Um, if my lovely person could... <laughs> hand it over actually let me show the camera first a hardcore fanzine 1999 youth of today issue and yeah i just wanted to give you something yeah especially youth of uh, today yeah contention this was uh collected and re-released uh by my friends in shining life press from dc like the full xenography pretty Mm. recently so this is really cool that's Awesome. I didn't, even, I didn't even know that. I just I was like, yo, yeah, I got yeah. it, bro. Thank you. Heck yeah, man. And uh, speaking of hardcore, I actually got into hardcore really late because I didn't have anyone to, you know, like a sibling or a cousin or anybody to sure. just like put me on to some music like that. So for the people that are watching, would you, you talking about Youth of Today, what Youth of Today song would you recommend someone that's trying to get into the band? I mean, I... This is a very complicated question um, because I feel like the way in which hardcore is right now is like it's fascinated at a much more modern point in time. Mm-hmm. And so like, yeah, I got into Youth of Today when I was a kid and they were like 15 years removed from the scene, you know, and they were still kind of around doing other things. And I feel like uh, the the time keeps shifting in that like 50 to 20 year window. So now it's it's cool because people are into like trapped under ice in Mm. cold world and these bands that i grew up seeing because that's what they missed out on Mm. um so i don't know if like the interest is really there in a band like youth today Mm. or like the early stuff like agnostic front negative approach all these bands that are like monumental to me um but yeah i mean to me youth today it's like they're a very specific band that i don't know if they have a great (laughs) modern like context for them because it's so outrageous but that's why i loved it um I think the song Break Down the Walls is like a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. I think it's beautiful. Um, I think maybe my favorite might be One Family. Okay. And these are both kind of like, I guess One Family has a fast part in it, but it's like, they're kind of like mid-tempo, like mashy kind of songs. Mm-hmm. Um, and that to me is kind of like, I don't know, the sweet spot. Yeah. Um, I think we were talking about this on this tour is like, I think, uh, Hardcore is obviously a participant, like driven Mm -hmm. music. 100%. And so the best songs are songs that you listen to and can immediately recognize what you're supposed to be doing in a specific moment, like Mm -hmm. as soon as it hits. Mm -hmm. And so these are songs where it's like you just kind of mosh the entire time and can like sing along very quickly because the lyrics are very (laughs) simple, very easy to understand, very in your face. And then it just goes like right back to a mosh part. And it's like, that is my favorite thing. You know, I'm yeah. not too big on fast stuff, except, you know, there's a lot. Of, I do like fast bands, but it's like mm. that realm of like whatever the floor Tom beat, mm. whatever. I don't know. That's like, yeah, that that was like, yeah, that was it. That was what like drew me to everything when I was a kid. That's so awesome to hear, dude. And hopefully somebody watching that's never really been into hardcore could listen to hardcore. And sure. Yeah. yeah. You know. And uh, something I wanted to talk about, something that's been in the news lately, it's looking like Warp Tour is coming back next year in 2025. And I was wondering, do you remember anything from 2007 and 2012 Warp Tour with Title Fight? Yeah, so the 2007 year where you like won a contest to play. Mm. They had this, I forget what it was, it might have been called The Battle of the Bands, mm. something very generic. <laughs> and you uploaded a song to their, essentially like their kind of whatever I guess now it would be like a band camp thing at the time was like, they're like MySpace or something. Mm -hmm. And you uploaded a couple songs and then they had a competition at each event where you like the, the fans would vote on a band to play. 
And I think, so you, we played 2007, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I forget. I think in 2006, we recorded specific songs to try and win this contest. Uh, like we were just going to the studio to demo stuff anyways, like, oh, like, let's put these songs up on whatever their website. And we lost. And then the next year, we just put up like a random couple songs from the demo that we recorded that year and we got it. And so it was like, I don't know, something that we didn't really care about, but it was like a cool opportunity we felt like. And we went and just like all our friends came and and that was like just a really, I don't know, kind of felt like a special time in our local scene. And so, yeah, we played and it was just kind of like a local show, but in a parking lot. Yeah, It's kind of weird. Uh, I don't remember who else played that year. Mm. But um, I mean, the big things I remember from that year, like opening with the Texas, the recent intro, like that's what we were doing at the time. Yeah. Um, just like having all our friends there, probably sneaking in and like doing shit like that. Uh, the year that we did the actual whole tour is kind of a different story. Mm-hmm. That was right when Floral Green was coming out. Um, we were touring a lot and that tour is like really, really brutal. Um, it's not something that I would recommend for people to do and it's not a thing you could do anymore. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, it's one of those kind of things. It's like a weird paying your dues thing, which I don't really agree with. Yeah. Uh, it's like, oh, like you got to do this thing because it will like help your band get to the next level. Yeah. And uh, Kevin Lyman was kind of a dick to us. Um, and I don't know. Really? We, wait, wait, what, what happened? Yeah. Um, we had a weird confrontation with him at one point and he told us that uh, if it weren't for him, we would be playing to 100 people a night or something like shit like that. And um, whack. Yeah, that's why. And that's fine. Um, he's entitled to his own opinion, you know, but like, yeah, so I remember those things. Yeah. And it's just like, it is a really brutal tour where it's like every day you wake up at like, oh, okay, this is another thing where probably not everybody had the same experience, but um, I was one of maybe two bands who like unloaded the truck. I think everybody else just had like professional roadies or something. And so I woke up every morning at seven in the morning to go like use a porter potty to then unload an entire tractor trailer full of gear to then go back and just sweat and try and find some sort of like AC. Right. Oh, so man. we could play at like 2 PM and, and then go to like, go load up and then do whatever. And it's like a weird, uh, you know, it's a weird summer camp and like you kind of like make your friends and, and have fun, but it's like, it was tough. It yeah, was, it was that pretty, sounds annoying. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it was pretty rough. But um, yeah, I think a lot of people saw, did see us there for the first time, and that was cool. But um, yeah, it is. Uh, it's it's a, a weird thing. Having sure. a lot of flashbacks as <laughs> yeah, I leave that all in the past. Yeah. Okay, yeah, forget about it. Uh, my next uh, and probably my final question because I don't want to take up too much time, but. About a year ago, there was an interview between you were interviewed by Norman Brannon, yeah, from Texas is the Reason yep. and legendary band, uh, the best. and goaded. And uh, you guys had a very insightful and fun conversation. I had such a good time reading that. You guys talked about a bunch of stuff, and obviously, you talked about Title Fight. And I feel like you. You explained it very well for a lot of people. I feel like a lot of people probably didn't even read that, but you always hear people asking title fight reunion, title fight, all this stuff. And I'm like, Ned kind of like explained everything in this interview. You said how title fight never really used the words like broken up or hiatus. I was wondering if you had any other statements you wanted to add on to that, or would you leave it at that? And in, in that interview, I mean, yeah, I feel like I just say the same thing over and over again. When I'm asked my blanket response is we have no plans. I think people like to ask me this all the time because they think I'm going to give like a special answer or something, but it's like, really, I don't have that much to say about it. It's, um, we are in a kind of like amorphous state, um, that is somewhere between nothing and something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's like, it's yeah. I, I think people obviously I I understand that people want a specific answer and that's I'm like somewhat sympathetic to that. Mm-hmm. I am never able to give a specific answer, but also it's like I think people are uh, looking for uh, I don't know looking for like some sort of resolution or something, mm-hmm. and that's also just something that I don't think I'm capable of giving. Mm-hmm. Um, 
to me, I think the only thing I can do is just like be a good custodian of the the band. Mm -hmm. And that's what I still try to do um, to this day. You know, we try and make it so that our records are available to people who want them at a, when we can control it at an affordable price that if people want to buy shirts, they could buy shirts that we made at an affordable price. Um, you know, that like they have access to these things if they want it. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to make sure that everybody in the world knows who we are. Like that's not really important to me personally. Mm -hmm. I just want it. Like if it's there and this is how I feel about any music that I make, it's like, I wanted to find the person who needs it mm -hmm. because so much of my life has been influenced by finding the right thing at the right time that I felt like was really significant to me. And so I wanted to be there for those people who are like truly looking for that one thing. And if it connects with them, that's great. Um, and I want to make sure that they are able to connect with that thing. And if they, we come to their town that they could see us in an affordable price, that they could see us in a venue that is accessible, that they could get merch at an accessible rate. And so, yeah, Title Fight, regardless of what state it's in, I keep those ideas going with that as well. And mm -hmm. with Glitter, I keep the same thing going with that. Yeah. yeah so man. it's like, yeah, all these things are just like, I, I want to be, uh, I want to help it be in the spot that I want it to be in, which I don't think is what other people want. Mm -hmm. And that's the, uh, the, the problem and the discrepancy and, and the issue that people take with us. But it's like, yeah. I'm just doing my best to make the, the music right able to be heard you know yeah that's a beautiful answer man and i feel like a lot of people could you know stop asking that question all the time because you got the answer from the man and you know hell yeah man uh i actually have one more thing for you you described how you're an avid reader and you collect books and stuff and uh i got something for you if you could please pass that you probably have this because you collect books a 1990 <laughs> this, this is a great book post punk and hardcore reader I bought that brand new, actually. So I think, is this the, the, they are doing a new edition of this, I believe. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. This, there's some amazing interviews in this. I read this on the way on like a vacation to Disney World. <laughs> I read this in the back of a, a GMC Suburban, I believe. Oh, man. Um, and yeah, a lot of like, really great things in here uh the mike judge interview mm -hmm. still one of my favorites i love the sam i am interview i love sam i am they're amazing um yeah this is where porcel talks about breaking edge and he says uh if we're gonna get high we're gonna get really high and they smoked weed at like a morrissey show at madison square garden or something like that yeah a lot of good stuff in here i'm gonna reread this ian interview because that's probably really good oh, i don't really yeah. remember that one yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, man, that's that's pretty much it. Do you have any final words for the glitterer lovers at home? Uh, thank you for listening, and uh, we'll see you on the road. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe. Keep the music alive. Glitterer will never die. <laughs>